So you think the 12900K is Intel's fastest 12th gen CPU? <laughs> <laughs> Think again. And it looks like AMD's next-gen GPUs could hit up to 3 gigahertz. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Wondershare and their Uniconverter One-Stop Video Converter. Uniconverter is a great tool that allows you to convert videos in their original quality fast with GPU acceleration, edit videos with the easy-to-use video editor, record with its built-in high-quality screen recorder that gives you multiple options for recording, and compress your videos to the right size and quality for sharing your clips online. And now version 13.0. 13.5 includes cool new features such as auto reframe to keep your subject in focus and background remover to save you loads of time. And best of all, you can try it out for free. So what are you waiting for? Go click the link in the description below to find out more. So did you just get done building a new PC with what you thought was going to be the fastest Intel processor for quite a while? <laughs> WRONG! You are no longer gonna have the fastest, at least according to videocards.com, it looks like the i9-12900KS is basically just gonna be an i9-12900K with the same 8 performance cores and 8 efficient cores, except for this time around, instead of having an all-core boost of 5 gigahertz, it's actually gonna have an all-core boost of 5.2 gigahertz. So, if you're wondering, no, it's not gonna be, like, substantially faster. We're talking about, uh, you know, minimal percentages here, maybe somewhere between, like, 2 and 5% faster. So yeah, it's not going to be a whole lot faster, but technically, yes, this will be the fastest gaming CPU if it comes out before Zen 3D, because this is a big question here. Is this 5.2 gigahertz i9-12900KS actually going to be faster or fast enough at least to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with something like Zen 3D? Or is Zen 3D going to once again reclaim the gaming crown for AMD, allowing them to once again have the fastest gaming CPU in the world? And I think that's something that we have to talk about here, because the 12 12900K, it is definitely faster than something like the 5950X, but it's not by a significant margin, and AMD has been talking about with Zen 3D that it could be up to 15% faster on average when compared to their regular Zen 3 processors, which in theory would put it ahead of something like the 12900K. However, there's a couple things that we haven't been talking about here that could potentially allow Intel to still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with something like a 3D cache version of the 5950X, which I think they're going to call the 6950X, so that's what I'm going to call it from now on and that's actually first of all this new 12900 ks because again getting an extra 200 megahertz of all core clock speed could allow them to get that little bit extra performance that they need to try and get you know just that little bit closer and also one other thing we have to keep in mind is that zen 3d is still going to be on ddr4 and it looks like ddr5 is getting faster and faster by the day recently actually corsair was able to put out some 6200 megahertz and 6400 megahertz kits of ddr5 and i assume that going forward you're only going to see those timings continue to drop lower and lower. In fact, I've been able to play around with some 6,000 megahertz DDR5, and there's definitely a lot of very loose sub timings on these kits. So as time goes on and the processes for creating DDR5 only gets better, I'm assuming that yes, DDR5 is going to continue to pull further and further ahead of DDR4. So if you do pair something like a 12900KS with some super fast DDR5 with the lowest timings available as well as sub timings, then actually, yeah, the 12900KS might actually be able to match something like the 50. 5950X, even when you pair it with some really good DDR4. But now let's go ahead and move on to those RDNA 3 leaks. Now this information comes out from the Twitter leaker, Graymon55, who has leaked a number of things in the past, and of course, as always, I will have all my sources linked in the description below so you can go ahead and see what they had to say themselves, but according to Graymon55, just to kind of wrap things up for you guys in a really digestible way so you can go ahead and not be on the toilet for hours, so basically what he had to say was there was three three different SKUs of RDNA 3 that he knows about, at least what he's talking about right now. Uh, the first one being the Navi 31 GPU that's apparently going to have 60 work group processors, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 256-bit bus, as well as apparently 256 megabytes of 3D Infinity Cache. Now, he does say that some of this information is going to be just actual new information that he's leaking, and some of it is a little bit of guesswork, so we don't really necessarily know what's actual leaked information and what's just his conjecture, uh, but a lot of this does kind of add up. Apparently, this one's going to have a clock speed of around 2.5 gigahertz. The Navi 32 die is apparently going to have 40 work group processors, 12 gigabytes.
gigabytes of G6 on 192 bit bus and 192 megabytes of 3D Infinity Cache. And apparently this one will be upwards of potentially up to 2.8 gigahertz, which is definitely really high. And then Navi 33 is apparently gonna have 16 work group processors. So that's definitely a lot less, eight gigabytes of G6 on 128 bit bus, and then only 64 megabytes of Infinity Cache. But this one's apparently gonna be up to three gigahertz for its boost clock. So that is absolutely incredible. And honestly guys, as outrageous as that sounds, actually, if you go ahead and you take something like the 6900 XT and you get a bend one and you unlock it and you try and push those clock speeds as high as possible, it is technically possible to get up to like three gigahertz on the current cards. Now it's not necessarily gonna be stable for all applications and it's only gonna be maybe for a split second and you might need to put it on something like ice water or something like that to actually achieve it. But I could definitely see, you know, some of their next generation SKUs potentially hitting up to three gigahertz in select scenarios. So yeah, up to three gigahertz on RDNA 3, I could definitely see it. And all we know about RDNA 3 is it's gonna be absolutely mind-blowingly powerful because according to people like Red Gaming Tech, we could be talking up to nearly three times the performance of the 6900 XT, at least when it comes to, I believe he's talking about just, uh, you know, raw crunching of numbers. Now in terms of gaming, how fast is it gonna be? Yeah, I don't know, maybe it'll be nearly twice as fast as the 6900 XT, but either way you slice it, this card is going to be absolutely incredible, an absolute monster, and it's definitely gonna pose a huge threat to NVIDIA when it comes to their RTX 40 series. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Intel's 12900KS paired with DDR5 will be able to actually match Zen 3D, or do you think AMD is gonna pull ahead once again with their Zen 3D processors? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.